What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Red Music Sound Lab. You're back on the Red Seed with your host, myself, Daniel Red. Okay, this Stam Audio uh, mic shootout is taking quite a while. Okay, I was working on it, and as I was editing the first vocals, I was finding out that I was doing too much uh, clip gain editing. Okay, I didn't want to compress uh, because obviously now we're we're going into territory that we're not keeping the natural mic compression we're not keeping the natural dynamics of the mic uh, moving and on top of that even if you set the threshold to a regular you know to a set or a fixed point each mic is going to have very different uh, uh, dynamic points and stuff like that so um, I pretty much scratched that session and I said to myself I, you know let me go back to the drawing board to see what I can do better. And I have thought about it strong and hard. And uh, I'm not going to tell you in this video. <laughs> You're going to have to stick and wait. Okay. But I did want to show you guys the mics that were uh, that are going to be used in the uh, Stam Audio mic shootout. At first, I thought, let me just keep it within Stam, Stam Audio. Um, and that's cool and all. But... I think the other thing too is, you know, Stam Audio is not the only manufacturer producing microphones. Um, he's producing pretty cool microphones, I'm gonna say that. But uh, we're all looking for that that sweet spot uh, of a price point where we feel comfortable shopping. So um, I thought long and hard about that too, and so I brought four more mics, uh, brought into the mix, and. Uh, you know, we'll shoot them out against STEM audio. So we'll hear the STEM audios against each other. We'll, and then we'll hear uh, microphones priced around the same price point or going for the similar type of character uh, in the shootout. So without further ado, let's start. Okay. Uh, starting with STEM audio, this is going to be the STEM audio SA87. Okay. There it is, folks. Read it and weep. Beautiful microphone, nice and big, heavy. Okay. Uh, you know, should be fun. Um, they're going after the they're going after the sound of the Neumann U87. The, the I'm not sure. I, I I thought it was under you know the decades and stuff like that that they were calling the the, the uh, microphone. So I thought it was an 80s microphone. Some say it's a 70. Some even go as far back as the 60s. I don't know it doesn't matter basically what it is is a neumann microphone that was all solid state no tubes none of that okay just a solid state uh microphone with a transformer that's it so that's the sa87 okay i can't show you the microphone because i'm actually recording uh this video with that microphone the stam audio sa67 uh the sa or Stam Audio is going after the U, the Neumann U67 sound. From there, the U67 or the Neumann U67 is the predecessor of the Neumann U47. So a little more modern. It was a smaller, it's a more compact microphone. Um, it seems like a lot of engineers, a lot of producers really love this at 67. Um, I'm starting to discover why. Uh, you know what? I'm going to share a few biases with you, meaning that I actually I'm leaning towards this mic a lot. Um, it feels like a very uh, workhorse microphone. It has the beautiful sounds, not maybe as rich as a U47, but it's it's got, you know, obviously that richness, that character, but it feels like it can go anywhere and everywhere with you and it's going to perform just fine. I'm really loving the U67, or correction, the SA67, okay? Going after the U Neumann U67. Let's see what we got here. And uh, you know what? Since we're still going after the uh, Neumann models, all right, let me open this up. This is the Neumann. I'm sorry. <laughs> Pretty close though. Uh, this is the Stam Audio. SA 47 going after the Neumann U47 sound. 
Very classic, very full of character, full sounding. I mean, this microphone, oh my goodness. You know, it's just, it's an amazing microphone, you know. Um, but with an amazing classic microphone comes the amazing classic uh, issues that you have to work with. And you'll see that more in the uh, shootout. I'm not going to share everything with you guys. I need you to keep watching my channel and keep, uh, you know, getting people to subscribe to this thing. You know, I need you guys as much as you guys need uh, my scientific approach to uh, shooting out these microphones. Okay. Next, still with Stam Audio, have the Stam Audio SA 800. This goes after that Sony CG800, I believe it's called, or C800G, something like that. Just look for Sony 800. Google that. Um, my goodness, that Sony microphone is. Uh, was going for 10 grand. I think it finally got discontinued. Um, it finally got discontinued once, for good, once and for all. Uh, it's a very expensive microphone. And uh, yeah, I'm not sure how it sounds. Um, some refer to it as the uh, Mariah Carey mic because I think at the time when Sony uh, produced that microphone, it was at the time when Mariah Carey was uh, with Sony Records. And so they said, hey, try this microphone. And, you know, it was her microphone. Um, I don't want to share too many opinions with you, but I think this is a very good, modern sounding microphone. Um, I was very hesitant of purchasing the microphone because I heard, oh, it's overly bright. It's that, it's this, and that, 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 that. But uh, Stam Audio had a really good, uh, promo going on uh, not too long ago and you know what man I couldn't say no and here's the other thing with Stam Audio let's say you buy something you don't like it the uh, if you sell it back you know in the used market whether eBay Reverb or any of those um, you're bound to get most of your money back you know what I mean um, be careful because there's some people that are you know, want to make money off of Stam Audio, and you got to be careful with that because uh, let's say that does start happening where people are paying more uh, for Stam Audio uh, equipment. Guess what? Stam Audio says, well, screw that. That's money that I'm supposed to go to me. So let me start uh, selling my stuff for more, uh, more expensive. So uh, you got to be careful with that, folks. If you want to sell it, sell it back. You know, if you want to make some sort of profit or break even after the uh, commissions that you have to pay and all that stuff, fine. But don't sell it for like this over profit. And to be quite honest, I've been paying attention to it. Not a lot. Not very many people are overpaying for the stuff when you can just be patient and wait. OK. All right. So that's the Stam, Stam Audio mic collection. OK. Uh, let me start with the more expensive mics that I want to, I want to use for the shootout. Okay, first, first in line, and if I'm not mistaken, this is going to be the second most expensive because uh, I think the other one's a little more expensive, just by a hundred or two hundred dollars. It's going to be the blue blueberry. Look at this; looks very classy. It's very classic as well, right? Very nice uh, design and everything. Um, the reason I chose this mic, I have a, uh, a blue kiwi, a blue kiwi. Um, I was gonna use that mic for the shootout because of the price point, but this video and the future videos with the shootouts is not really about pricing. It's more about either the sound of a manufacturer that you're going for or the type of microphone and so the um, kiwi the blue kiwi even though it's an expensive microphone around two grand i did not get it for two grand folks uh around two grand um it's a solid state it's just all components and a capsule okay this on the other hand the blue kiwi right obviously it's a solid state but this one has a transformer in there so I figure, oh, hey, just like the U87, obviously the 67 and the 47 and even the 800 
they all use uh, tubes, but they also have transformers. Transformers are very important to uh, um, the sound, you know? So I said, all right, cool. This should be a good microphone. This retails for about $1,000, sometimes a little less. Um, we'll see how this microphone goes, okay? And next up in line, this is the most expensive microphone uh, away from Stam Audio. And uh, this one is not like a transformer based microphone or anything like that, but he's going for the Neumann sound, right? Now Neumann uh, has obviously, they have a market for these expensive microphones, but like all good manufacturers, they always try to go for more of a lower denominator, right? Entry level stuff. And so we're going to check out. This is not the entry level Neumann, right? The entry level Neumann is the TLM 102. This is more of that. Hey, guys, this is where you actually start. This is the TLM 103, the Neumann TLM 103, right? So it has it's pretty much just the capsule and a, and a little bit of circuitry in there. And that's it. I can't really open up this mic. Um, so we'll uh, check it out. We'll see. Uh, how classic, you know, how stem audio using classic Neumann sound is standing up against Neumann with modern uh, sounding or modern sound. Okay. Then um, I believe the warm audio W87R2 on box video is going to be first. Uh, pretty sure it is. So you probably already watched the unboxing, but this is going to be the other competitor. The uh, Warm Audio WA87 Revision 2 or R2. This actually starts feeling more, feeling meaning weight and uh, size. It feels more like the uh, SA87. In fact, let's check it out. Um, so because Warm Audio just released this microphone, I want to keep it uh, I want to keep it relevant. With that being said, I do have to give a disclosure. This is the first version of the SA87. I believe now Stamod is up to the second, maybe even third version of the W87, where he's just changing capsules. From what I've been looking at, from what I've been reading, always visit his uh, Facebook page or yeah, Stamod Facebook page um, and check out his website. Um, it sounds like maybe he's just going through capsule manufacturers and so the difference is i don't think it's going to be that much um when, when i think when you have something so good and you start tweaking it left and right um you're probably going from like let's say a mercedes a good expensive mercedes to the uh the next same model just the next revision up, you know, like let's say you have a Mercedes uh, S class or whatever, then, you know, they do a, a few tweaks here and there. And now it's the AMG model, right? So same with this, you know, your the differences are, are probably going to be very subtle, but I do have to give you that disclosure, you know, that this is the, uh, the first revision, not the latest. And honestly, if I give you the newer revision of the Norman how long am I going to have to wait a few months? So I need to give you guys a video of the, the stem audio mics now. So we're getting revision one. Okay. But we're getting revision two with warm. Live with it. Okay. I don't know. You guys are really, really, really wondering the difference between revision one and revision two or three from stem audio. I don't know. Send them a message. Tell them, send me one and we'll shoot it out here. Okay. All right. The last microphone, another affordable microphone, uh, in the Stam, uh, is Stam Audio Mic Shootout, it's gonna be the Aventone CV12. Okay, this is a kind of a famous microphone because supposedly uh, Taylor Swift used this microphone in her first album. Okay, now a lot of people say, "Oh yeah, yeah no, the microphone, microphone." Yeah, let's be honest, guys. Yeah, she uses microphone, but into what preamp, right? Uh, you know, a lot of people say Bono used an SM58. Yeah, into what preamp? Uh, Michael Jackson used the SM7. Into what preamp, right? Let's 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 get it right here, guys. Uh, 
just because they recorded something in a cheaper microphone or anything like that doesn't mean that it wasn't going into a better set of uh, studio equipment, okay? Let's not kid ourselves here. Let's not, you know, just say, oh, if I buy this microphone, it's just like, tell no, okay? She had a producer. She had a freaking vocal coach in that session. Who knows, right? Yeah, it might have been her first album. She might not, she might have not been, you know, had the heavy production team that she has now or as of late. Um, but there had to be a good engineer in a good studio or, or at the very least a pretty solid studio with good with good quality gear, right? A producer. So if you buy this mic and saying, oh hey, no. No, no, no. Okay. But we are gonna check it out. We are gonna see if you know a six hundred dollar microphone does stay up or can can keep up with more expensive microphones. That's why I you know kept this microphone even though the sound of the C12, the AKG C12, which this microphone is trying to go after. Um, it's probably very different or most likely very different from a U47 and U67 and so on, right? But the elements are still there. There's a tube microphone, has a transformer, okay? So we're going to check all that out, right? Obviously, this is a pretty inexpensive microphone. We're going to check it out against more expensive microphones, excuse me, and we're going to see how, it's, uh, how it keeps up. All right, so... Stick with me. I know it's taking a while. Trust me. Now riddle, the, riddle me this, YouTube. How do I record eight or nine microphones without ever changing the position of the microphone and never changing the performer or the performance behind a microphone? I want to see you guys uh, comment below, okay? I want to see if you can uh, solve this riddle. And the next, uh, or, you know, once I start uh, actually working on this uh, on this uh, shootout, I will start revealing how exactly I'm going to, what's the approach I'm going to take towards this mic shootout. Okay, everyone, you guys take it easy. Have a good one. Be safe out there. Please remember to like and subscribe. Comment below because I want to see you guys uh, solve this riddle. All right. I'll see you in the next few videos. Take it easy, and I'll see you next time. Bye.